When you're going on a Disney cruise, you want to be able to get on the ship as early as possible so that the magic can begin. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to get the best port arrival time for your Disney cruise. The port arrival time is exactly what it says. It's the time you are allowed to arrive at the port and begin checking onto the ship. So the earlier the port arrival time, the earlier you'll get on the ship and the more time you'll get on board to start and then maximize your cruise. There are lots of different hints and tips that I'm gonna be sharing through this video as I do my own online check-in for our cruise on the Disney Wish in 33 days time. So before we get started, if you're new here, hi, I'm Ree. Welcome to my channel, Mummy of Fort Does Disney, where I share loads of Disney cruise and Disney parks, vlogs, tips, and tricks for families wanting to get organized and maximize the magic. There will be the full vlog series coming, so make sure you're subscribed with bell notifications on. But I've already got loads of Disney cruise and Disney parks videos that you can check out after this one, including a full vlog series on the Disney magic, a vlog series on the Disney dream, and all of those are crammed full of cruise tips that you're gonna to want to know before your cruise. So check all those out after you've seen this video. So there are two main ways to get your port arrival time organized. The first is by maximizing your online check-in. Now we're gonna be doing the online check-in today and taking you through the whole process. You can see what that looks like and sharing the tips as you go, but stay tuned to the end of the video for the second significant way Way you can get a different port arrival time, which is kind of what's applying to our trip this time. So keep watching and I'll share that with you later in the video. When you can log in to do your online check-in depends on your Castaway Club status. Castaway Club is Disney Cruise Line's reward system. The more you cruise, the more perks you get. We're currently Silver Castaway Club members because we've already done two Disney cruises and this is our third. The more you cruise, the further up the Castaway Club scheme you get and the earlier you can do your online check-in. So as a Silver Castaway Club member, we can check in 30 three days before and the general public can check in 30 days before. So obviously we've had gold, platinum and pearl members checking in before us so they will already have taken those more preferential port arrival times. By checking in as soon as it is available to you then you're going to be able to get better port arrival times. Now it is not 5 a.m. And 5 a.m. UK time at least is the time I would normally recommend checking in on your allocated day to do your online check-in. Knowing the date that you can do your online check-in is super important and that is something I would urge you to write down in your magical cruise planner, which you can buy from my planner store if you are looking for them. I have got entire videos on these cruise planners explaining everything that's in them so you don't actually have to buy one, you could just watch the video and jot down the notes of everything I'm saying in those videos or you can pick up a digital copy to either print out or fill in on a tablet or a paper copy, either spiral bound or like a perfect found book version but one of the pages within the cruise planner actually shows you exactly when you can book because if you're higher up the castaway club system you can actually book earlier so you may get preferential rooms and prices as those bookings will be available to you ahead of the general public it tells you how many days before sailing you can do your onboard bookable activities i have got a separate vlog where will my little willipedia who knows everything about disney got up with me at 5 a.m to do our, all our onboard bookable activities. So make sure you check out that vlog after this one and that takes you through that whole process. And then it tells you how long before your cruise you can do your online check-in. So we are silver, so it's 33 days before. If you are gold, so you've done five to nine, nine sailings, it's 35 days before. Platinum, which is 10 to 24 sailings, how amazing would that be? You can check in 38 days before. And if you've done over 25 sailings with Disney Cruise Line, you can check in 40 days before you sail. So you really are going to get the best port arrival times that way. I guess one of the hacks is to sail more with Disney Cruise Line, which isn't a super achievable hack, but wouldn't we all like to do that? And thinking about it, there is the third, and I guess ultimate hack, if you wanna call it that, for getting the best port arrival time, and that is simply by paying for a concierge suite. Concierge guests can show up at any time that suits them during the port arrival window, meaning if they want to show up first, they can, but this comes with a very hefty price tag. So when you've booked your cruise, you need to know exactly when your onboard activities and your online check-in is available to you and write the dates here in your planner. You need to make sure you've set an alarm because online check-in opens at midnight Florida time, which is Eastern time, which works out as 5 a.m. here in the UK. Please do check with your own time zone, especially take into account of any daylight savings or anything, but it's midnight Florida time. 
that that window opens for the online check-in. So if you watch my online check-in with me for the Disney Magic or the Disney Dream, you'll know we were there on the button checking in at 5 a.m. There's a reason I'm doing this later in the day today. It's currently 10.24 a.m. So I've taken my children to school. I'm being quite leisurely and very chilled about starting this online check-in, aren't I? And that's because we're doing the second way of getting a port arrival time, which is a way that we've never done before. And that is because we are actually going from Walt Disney World to our sailing on the Disney Wish. And we're using Walt Disney World transportation to get us there. So for any cruise that you go on with the Disney Cruise Line, you need your port arrival time if you're making your own way to the port. If, however, you've got Disney transportation getting you to the port, then your port arrival time will be the time that your Disney transportation chooses to get you there. So the correct time to get on the ship is the time that you arrive. It is exciting because the Magical Express is no longer a thing to take you from the airport to, to your Walt Disney World hotel. So we have paid for these transfers in with our package, which we booked with a travel agent, but it is taking the pressure off getting this exact port arrival time because Disney Cruise Line are in charge of that. We're gonna start the online check-in process in a second. I'm gonna share a lot more tips for if you're doing it the traditional way, they're getting up at 5 a.m. to make sure that you get everything done as quickly as possible because the quicker you can get through the online check-in, then the quicker you will be able to get as far as checking your port arrival time and booking that nice early port arrival time for your group. However, I've not done it this second way before where it's up to Disney Cruise Line the time we arrive. So we're gonna have a look at what that looks like so it's not a surprise and a shock when you get to do it yourself. Okay, let's jump into the computer and have a look at the Disney Cruise Line website and take you through step-by-step step how to do the online check-in for the Disney Wish like we're doing or any of the other cruises on the Disney fleet. So you need to go to already booked and my reservations. There'll be the swirl of doom. More so, I would imagine, at 5 a.m. when you, everyone's trying to check in. So we've already seen the cruise activities book now button. So you can add those bookings, but they're from 60 days before you cruise. And that's a totally separate video where we took you through all those options. So as soon as 5 a.m. hits on that time where your online check-in window opens, you can just hit check-in and we can go through together. So we go to begin check-in and then all the guests in your party are listed. And then you just need to go through each one, one at a time filling out all of the details. There is an option at the bottom to check which guests have the same information with where you live. So if all of your party live at the same address, you can tick that and that'll go through just that once. Then as you scroll down, you need to either upload or take a photograph of your passport. You need to make sure that these are in JPEG formats because sometimes it's a bit messy if you have taken a photo on your phone, you've sent it to your computer and it's not in the right format. Make sure they're in JPEGs or make sure you've just got the passports there to actually take a photograph if you're doing this on a mobile device that might be easier for you. Now, the mistake I made the first time I did the online check-in is I filled in all the information and then there were uploads. So I was getting the swirl of doom. I had to fill everything back in again. I think the tip I would give you is just make sure the upload has happened before you write everything in. Make sure you've also got details of an emergency contact that you can list, including their telephone number. You're going to need that for your check-in. So I've got a folder on my computer, which is just called passport. I've saved all the passport photographs and I have labeled them as the correct names. It will ask you if you want to retake the photo or use the photo, and then it will lift the information from the passport and put it directly into the boxes for you so you don't have to type it all out. Document for States of, United States of America. Now this is slightly different from the last time we did the Disney Cruise because obviously we sailed out of Southampton when we sailed on both the Magic and the Dream. This time it is asking us for the Esther. Oh, I've actually got to upload a photograph of the Esther as well. Okay, didn't have to do that last time. Now my Esters are saved as PDFs on the computer. So I did not know this, but it, I mean, I guess it makes sense that it's going to need the ESTA, which is the document that you are required from the UK in order to enter the United States. In fact, it's probably for most countries that you're gonna require an ESTA, unless you've got a green card or other document that proves you are an American citizen, then the ESTA is the electronic system for travel authentication to get you into the United States. Now, obviously we've got these and we've had them before. We had them for our last Florida trip. They will have expired our original 2022 and ESTA's last two years. 
so they expired. I had to refresh them before this trip. There is a small charge for an Esther and it's definitely worth doing well in advance of your trip. Technically, I think they only have to be in place two days before you travel, but obviously we now know you're going to need them for your online check-in for the Disney Cruise Line. Sometime later, <laughs> and I have managed to create a JPEG of my Esther document, I've uploaded that. So top tip that I'm sharing for the very first time on this channel, get your Esters. Not only do you need to have them to take with you to travel, but you're actually going to need to upload it during this online check-in process for your cruise if you are cruising from the United States and you are not a United States citizen. Make sure that does not hold you up because if this was the 5 a.m. trying to get the port arrival time thing, this would really have slowed me down and those really good port arrival times would be being snapped up by all the Silver Castaway Club members that, other than me. Next thing you wanna do is upload a photograph. I do have photographs saved on my computer in a folder for all members of our party. Just plain, you are allowed to smile on it. It's not like a passport photo, but it needs to look like your passport photo. No headwear, looking forward, plainish background, all that kind of thing. And that is used as your ID, as you're getting on and off the ship, every time you buy anything, every time you scan your key to the world card and they check that it's actually you doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, like, like buying stuff or getting on and off the ship. So it needs to be a color photo with no filter from shoulders up, looking forward, face clearly visible, only one person in the photo. You do not use your exact photo from your passport, no hat or object on your head, so no ears, sorry, no sunglasses and no other people or objects in the photo. The warning message appears next to your photo once it's uploaded. It's possible it does not meet the guidelines. If you believe it does, please use the save button below. Otherwise, Upload another photo, a cast member will verify your photo. Now, I'm waiting for my Esther to be verified. Sometimes you'll have a message saying a photo needs to be verified and sometimes it'll just accept it straight off. Important information, will this guest be 24 weeks pregnant or more at any time during your sailing? No. Does your guest need to remain in a wheelchair while boarding a vehicle or traveling on the Disney Cruise Line for transfer? No. Save. There are five people traveling in our party and now we're on to the next one. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than anticipated because I didn't have the esters in JPEGs, but it's all done now. And I've got all those saved as JPEGs and PDFs in a folder on my iCloud, which then synchronizes with my phone. I will make sure I've got printouts of those as well to show at both the airport when we arrive in Orlando and obviously to embark the wish too. So if you're doing sailings out of the UK, you're gonna need your photograph of your passport and you're also going to need a photograph of that head and shoulders. And then if you're sailing out of America, you're gonna need those esters too. There may be other documents really required if you're sailing in other parts of the world, check with Disney Cruise Line if you're going to need those. So now we're moving on to onboard account where we add a credit or debit card on file. So for this, I use my Monzo card. This is not an ad or anything, just sharing what I use. The reason I use a Monzo card is because I don't get currency conversion fees when spending abroad. And obviously everything on the Disney Cruise Line, even if you are sailing out of Southampton, is in dollars. So you're gonna get currency conversion fees added if you just use a normal credit card. So I really like this. I just use the free plan. I have got a referral deal. I'm not working with the company. This is just like a private referral deal. If you open a Monzo account, when you make your first purchase on it, they'll add five pounds to your account and five pounds to mine. It's a little thank you, a little referral. So full disclosure, I do get a little bonus if you join, um, but so do you. Um, and in fact, I've recently switched my business account to Monzo 2. I also just use the free plan for that. But if you join with a Monzo business account, you get 50 pounds added to your account and I get 50 pounds added to mine. So if you are interested in checking that out, then I'll put all the details on screen and in the accompanying blog post. But we've used these for traveling. I started using it when we went going to Paris a lot. We had the annual passes for Disneyland Paris. I love it so much because they have a really good app that goes with it that I use it at home too. I also like using it for spending because the children have pots. It's actually, it's still my account, but I just separate different pots for the children's money. I put their money in it with their photographs. And then as they make purchases out of their money, then I can show them exactly what they've spent. I can attach receipts and things to it. I just, it's a really, really good system that I genuinely like, which is why I kind of share it, want to share it. Um, but that's the card that I'm going to use. Um, I'm sure there are other similar cards that don't have um, currency conversion fees, other similar kind of online bank type things. 
but check with your bank if you are going to get currency conversion fees when spending abroad before you choose which card you're going to submit in this part of the process. So credit or debit card, you can add cash or other, or charges paid by other guests. So I'm the lead guest, we're going to add my card here. Then when you get to the bottom of this page where you're adding your credit card, you can choose who you're going to pay for. So you could choose to untick certain people that you're going to pay for. You do have to pay for minors, so they're gonna to have to pay for themselves, but you could choose to untick other adults in their party and add their own credit cards for them. You can also choose who to grant charging privileges to. It will actually allow me to grant charging privileges to all of my family, including my youngest who is just six. We're gonna remove charging privileges for the children because I don't think they need that, um, but uh, you can we can grant it to my husband or I could add it his own credit card at this stage if that's what I wanna do. On the next screen, we're on to traveling with children. So the first question is about child debarkation, which is quite simply getting off the ship. Online security prohibits children under 18 years of age from debarking the ship unless accompanied by an adult in the same stateroom. As a parent or guardian traveling with children in your stateroom, you may authorize the children to go ashore unaccompanied or to go ashore accompanied by an adult in another stateroom, please select from the following options. My children will only debark the ship with adults in the same stateroom or complete authorization for children in my stateroom to go ashore accompanied by an adult in another stateroom or to go ashore unaccompanied. We're only traveling in one stateroom. I do not wish for my children to go ashore unaccompanied. So we're gonna opt for the children to only be able to get off the ship with myself or my husband. Then for ch youth club activities registration, and there have been some really controversial changes to the youth club that have made people really angry. So stay tuned and we'll talk about that. But registration is required in order for a child to participate in activities at the Disney Oceaneer Club and Disney Oceaneer Lab. Please be aware the youth club activities need to be booked exclusively and are available on a first come first surge basis. The youth club activities registration does not mean guaranteed reservation in the youth club activity spaces. Please note it's a small word. Nursery will not be available for initial sailings. Now I'm guessing that was initial sailings. I was talking about the wish originally. And I know that back when we sailed on the magic in 2021 for a real COVID cruise, youth club had to be actually booked as in the children could only go to the Oceaneer Club or the Oceaneer Lab when they had a reserved slot. However, for our last sailing on the dream, they could just show up whenever they wanted. So I think the wording on this is based around COVID in case they want to implement bookings and registration for the kids clubs. But as far as I know, at the time of filming, the kids can just show up as and when they wish. So check-in privileges. Should this child be allowed to check themselves in and out of youth clubs? In a ship-wide emergency, all children, including those authorized to check out on their own, must be picked up from the youth clubs by an authorized member of their travel party. Be sure you've downloaded the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app on your mobile device before sailing, should a counselor need to contact you for any reason. Now I know Zara actually bumped her head um, while she was in the youth club last time on the last cruise. She was absolutely fine, but we were notified on the app that Zara wanted to be picked up. Basically, they wanted us to see her in person. She didn't actually want to be picked up, she was fine but they did notify me that I needed to go to the youth club to pick her up and to see her and check on her. So I found that system really, really good. So I'm gonna say no, the children can just be picked up by us rather than wander off around the ship by themselves. It seems kind of sensible. Uh, meals and food cooking programs are on hold until further notice. Uh, so there's no feeding the children anything during youth club. We've not experienced any food in the youth club since we've sailed the Disney Cruise Line. Epinephrine injector medication, download an epi form, doesn't apply to my children. And as Zara's between three and seven years of age, she is six, she'll be nearly seven at the time of sailing, it is asking, is she toilet trained? And it's saying they must be toilet trained between the age of three and seven to participate in youth club activities. So yes, she is. And there is a space at the bottom of the form if you want to fill in any additional information you feel that the counsellors need to know about your child. Then we've got youth club activities and policies. This is all here for you to read about first aid, outside the venue policy, giving permission for the children to be taken to other venues on the ship if they're doing activities like that. Um, there's a, a policy about behaviour, making sure your child is behaving themselves that there is no photography and videography of guests within the secured youth club. So you can film in the youth clubs when it's an open house, but not when it's just the kids there that have been dropped off with no parents. The Oceaneer Band, partic kids participating in the youth activities will be issued a wearable Oceaneer Band that utilizes radio frequency RF technology. And these are 
the magic bands that the kids are issued. In the Oceania Club, the Oceania bands. On the Wish, they are using the Disney Band Plus, which is like the Magic Band Plus in the parks, which I am intending to get for the kids. So I'm assuming that they are magic bands that'll be using to open the, unlock the doors and things in place of their Keep the World card will work as their Oceania band, but we'll let you know that when we actually embark the ship because I don't know the answer to that until we get there. So I'm selecting myself as an authorized adult to represent myself as a legal, legal guardian. You can choose who is allowed to pick up your child and you need to choose a secret word that is like your password that you're not allowed to pick up your kids from Youth Club without this password. So let's pick one of those now. Then you have got an option to download the My Disney Cruise Adventure booklet which has got things for your children to fill in, just something to do perhaps on the way to the ship while you're waiting to embark the ship. So that's a nice little activity to print out. It gives your children lots of ideas about what will be happening during the embarkation process. This is especially good if your children have autism and really respond well to knowing what's going on and having anticipation and understanding of the process. On the next screen, you're gonna to need to share your travel plan plans with Disney Cruise Line. So are you flying in for your cruise vacation? So I'm gonna say yes both ways because we are flying in before the cruise. Seven days before the cruise, we're going to Walt Disney World, but yes, we're gonna to have to fly to get there. And then it's gonna to want to know all of our details for the incoming flights and the outgoing flights. After the cruise, where are we going? We're going to the airport transport airport terminal with transfers and then are the guests having the same travel plans as you yes so if i fill in all of this information then i'm only going to have to do that once because let's face it there's going to be a little bit of a pain to do okay let me find my flight details and pop those in so now we're on to the port arrival time and it says here you're not required to select a port arrival time please click continue below to proceed to the cruise contract and complete your online check-in. For guests arriving via Disney Cruise Line Transportation, that's us, your transportation arrival time may differ slightly from your pre-arranged port arrival time. All guests are requested to arrive at the cruise terminal no later than one hour to the all aboard time. Basically, because we've got Disney Cruise transfers, we do not need to pick a port arrival time. But if you were arriving at the port yourself, this would be the time where you pick the port arrival time. And this is the bit that's really crucial to get as early as possible. Now, this is especially important if the cruise is the very first part of your holiday, obviously for the dream and for the magic, we were just sailing from Southampton. So we were just hanging around Southampton, waiting to get on the ship and getting on that ship was just really crucial, just as early as possible. We were so excited to get started with the magic. However, we're leaving our Walt Disney World Resort. We'll be getting on the Disney bus and going over to the cruise. So we'll already kind of be in the magic a little bit. So yes, we'll be keen to get on the ship as early as possible, but whatever time Disney Cruise Line bus gets us there, will be absolutely fine. Now we're gonna click continue to head on to the cruise contract. Suffice to say, it is extensive. It is worth printing that out or emailing it to yourself so that you can read it at your leisure. Once you've read and understood the contract, click that you have read and understood the contract and then you can click complete check-in. Then after another swirl of doom, you are given your port arrival form. This is really important. You'll need this multiple times as you arrive at the port. So I like to print these out and have it as a digital copy on my phone too. So that is us checked in for the wish. Some things that are well worth remembering before you start your online check-in. Make sure you have all of your Disney Cruise Line login details ready to go. A nice stable internet connection and good battery if you're using a laptop or a phone or tablet. Make sure you have all of your documents, including the headshots, photographs of your passport, and photographs of your esters if you're traveling to the United States in a JPEG format, and have those in a nice folder, on your device or at the top of your camera roll, nice and easy to find if you are using a tablet or a mobile. You want to make sure you're checking in nice and early if the port arrival time is important to you. Remember that's from midnight Florida time, which is 5 a.m. in the UK. And you can check in your magical cruise planner or on the Disney Cruise Line website for how many days before you sail that you can check in dependent on your Castaway Club status. Make sure this date is put in your planner, make sure it's in your diary, you've got alarms going off, you do not wanna miss this date. So that's 5 a.m. for us, 33 days before we sail. Now I did say that there are some rather controversial things that have gone on surrounding the kids club that people are really, really mad about. And I've gotta say, when I was going to check William in, I was expecting to see some differences in the online check-in for the kids club registration for him 
following the changes because William is 11, he is not 12 until after we return from our cruise. So traditionally, William would have been able to go to the Oceaneers Club and also go to Edge. Just a few days before filming this video, a big announcement changing the structure of the kids club went out and this is what's got people really really angry so if you want to find out what's going on with the changes with the kids club you can click on the video on screen now and that will tell you everything you need to know you can check out my patreon for early release content and of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all of the cruise vlogs coming up thanks so much guys see you real soon Mwah. bye